Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Guan Yan and from University of Illinois. So our work is about network configuration verification through model checking. So in a typical enterprise network, uh, the network administrators will write these configuration files, which are then deployed into the individual network devices. So this uh, device software will, after loading the configuration files, will execute the protocols cooperatively, which we call the control plan. And the control plan protocols will uh, execute and most of the time uh, converge to a stable state and produce the data plan. This is all good, but as the networks become more complicated, things can easily go wrong and there can be bugs in the configuration files. So our goal is uh, to verify the network configurations, which means that given an input configuration, we want to verify that the desired correctness properties hold. But in order to uh, argue the network behavior formally, we have to have a model for the control plan execution. And we verify that, uh, the converged states of that model. But it is difficult to model control plan execution. One reason is that networks are dynamic. There can be link or node failures, and the control plan protocols will react to that failures and possibly converge to a new state. Another reason is that networks are non-deterministic, which is caused by the distributed and the concurrent execution of control plan protocols, which are carried out by those individual network devices. And yet another reason is that networks are diverse. There can be multiple control plan protocols running in the same network, such as uh, BGP, ISP, uh, OSPF, ISIS, so, and even if we put in the effort to model all the above mentioned behavior, the key challenge to verification is still scalability. It is still difficult to scale verification to practical network sizes. So in the past, people have been working on configuration verification, but there's no tool that can handle all the challenges while still maintaining high scalability. And Minesweeper is a, a powerful verification tool that can handle all the challenges that we mentioned, but it suffers from low scalability. Our design is called Plankton, which we expect to be able to handle all the challenges, uh, including being able to model failures, non-determinism, and have guaranteed soundness and support for different protocols, while at the same time still be scalable. But it is a very difficult challenge, so our first intuition about Minesweeper, Minesweeper's low scalability is that SMT is a bad fit for fast route computation. So what Minesweeper did is essentially it transformed the route computation problem into a com completely different domain. So it encode this route computation into a set of SMT constraints and then use SMT solver to solve for the solution. But this approach will have a huge disadvantage compared to simple software execution of the deterministic route computation. And with this intuition, we did a small experiment where we compute the shortest path in fat trees with two different approaches. One approach is SMT solving. So we encode this shortest path problem into a set of SMT constraints and then use SMT solver to solve for the solution. And the other approach that we tried is that we implement this soft, uh, shortest path algorithm into a executable software model and simply execute the software to compute for the shortest path. And this experiment shows that direct computation using executable software model is about 1,000 to 10,000 times faster than SMT solving. But note that um, this small experiment is actually completely deterministic. But this is not the case in real world networks. In real world networks, we do have non-determinism in those uh, complicated configurations. And some of these non-determinisms will, will not actually affect the converged states. So in this case, because we are verifying the converged states, so we don't actually uh, need to cover all the non-determinisms in, non in that case. 
And so our intuition is that the important non-determinism is that not, not that much, uh, but which will include such as BGP, non-deterministic raw selection, and non-deterministic link failures. And in addition to those important non-determinism, there's still plenty of irrelevant non-determinism in protocol execution, which we will discuss in detail later. So if, with this intuition, if we can prune the execution to only the non-determinism uh, non non that matters, we can achieve high scalability. So with these two intuitions, uh, executable software models and eliminating uh, irrelevant non-determinism, our work of plan time can be divided into three parts. So in order to have this executable software model, we use explicit state model checking. Explicit state model checking is a common technique in software engineering. Given a model of a program, it will explore all possible execution paths in that program. And in the context of Plankton, we model the control plane of the whole network as a single program. For example, this is the state of the network. And let's say at this state, link one may fail or link two may fail, which will lead to two different states. And if at state two, we execute node one, it will also lead to a new state and so on and so forth. So this model of the network is essentially a transition system where uh, each branch is a non-deterministic choice of the network. And in our work, we use spin as the model checker to explore the state space using DFS. So now we know how we do model checking to execute the executable software models, but we still don't have a model yet. So we propose a new protocol model to model all those uh, variable control plan protocols which is called Reduced Simple Path Vector Protocol. And its predecessor is Simple Path Vector Protocol, or SPVP, which was proposed by, by Griffin in 2002. SPVP is essentially an abstract protocol that can capture BGP's behavior. And based on SPVP, we propose what we call the Reduced SPVP, or RPVP. It is our model for BGP and OSPF in our implementation. And the major difference between RPVP and SPVP is that RPVP uses shared memory model instead of message passing. And hence, it will reduce some of those uh, irrelevant non-determinism. And the high-level idea, algorithmic criteria about, about RPVP is that at each step, the node look at its neighbor's paths and pick the best among them. So with this RPVP model, it will preserve all the converged states, which means that as long as there's a converged state in the, original, in the execution of the original protocol, such as BGP or SPF, with this RPVP model, we will be able to reach that converged state eventually. So this model is specifically designed for verifying converged states. However, it will not preserve all the intermediate states or the transient states, and it will also not preserve all the divergent behaviors, which are actually a good thing for us because it will reduce a lot of the search space for the model checker. So with this RPVP uh, model as our protocol model, we implement it as an executable software model, and it can also eliminate some of the irrelevant non-determinism. And in, in addition to that, we also propose a series of optimizations that will further eliminate more uh, irrelevant non-determinism. So this is a list of uh, optimizations that were implemented in Plankton. In this talk, we will only be focusing on two instances of partial order reduction. And you can find the rest, implement, uh, the rest optimizations in the paper. So the idea of partial order reduction is actually quite simple. If different orders of the same actions that will produce the same result, in our case, which means the same converged states, then we only have to explore one order of them. So that's the idea. And so our 
uh, one instance of partial order reduction is pruning the inconsistent executions. So we say that an execution is inconsistent if during the execution, a device selects a path and later changes it. And we have a theorem saying that surprisingly, for every inconsistent execution, there's a consistent execution reaching the same converged state. So let's look at one example. Uh, on the left is the state diagram of the network uh, state transition. And on the right is the routing topology where each node stands for one network device. So in this case, node zero is the origin of route advertisement. And let's say that at the current state, there's a branch of execution where we execute node two first. So now node two will update its path to node zero and then we execute node four. Node four will update its path to route packets to node zero through node two and so on and so forth until it reaches a converged state assuming there's one. So this is one branch of execution and because we're using a uh, depth of a search, it will eventually backtrack to this state. And let's say there's another branch of execution where we execute node five first. So it will lead to a new uh, different state. And then we execute node four and node two. Note that at this state, node four will route the packets through node two because uh, it was its best path at that state. So if at this state we execute node four again, note that this state transition will make node four change its path from node three to node two. So we define this kind of execution as inconsistent. And because of that theorem, we can safely prune this inconsistent because there's always another, there's always a consistent execution that can reach the same converged state. Another idea, another instance of harsh order reduction is prioritizing deterministic nodes. We say that a node is deterministic if the node never changes its path after this step of execution. We also have a theorem saying that for any partial execution, if we extend that partial execution by executing, by executing a deterministic node, it will not change the set of reachable converged states, which means that we can safely prioritize uh, the deterministic nodes and without losing any coverage. So this is one example of that. Uh, similarly, node zero is the, the origin of route advertisement. And let's say at the current state, we can either execute node one or node two. However, if we know from the configuration that node one will always prefer node zero over any other path, then if this is the case, we say that node one is deterministic. And according to that theorem, we can safely prune the branches where other nodes execute before node one. So with this two and other optimizations that we didn't mention in this talk, we evaluate and implement the prototype of plankton with support for OSPF, BGP, and static routing. And with this prototype, we evaluate uh, the implementation on various scenarios. And in this, in this talk, we were only focusing on the comparison of the state-of-the-art uh, verification tool, MySweeper. So this is the comparison with MySweeper without link failures. So we run the experiment uh, on Plankton and MySweeper against different combinations of networks and policies. And we can see from the result of this experiment that uh, Plankton is faster than MySweeper by around three to four orders of magnitude in, ter in terms of time. And we also have memory improvement uh, than MySweeper. So this is still a comparison with MySweeper, but with single link failure. So even with single link failure, we, uh, Plankton is, can still outperform MySweeper by around two to three 
orders of magnitude and slightly improve on the memory uh, efficiency. And besides from comparison with the state-of-the-art state configuration tool, we also evaluate Plankton on real-world network configurations. So in this experiment, we verify six different policies, including reachability, bounded length, and waypointing uh, on 10 different networks, which we gather from three different organizations. So each group of bar is one network, and we can see from the result that all verification is finished within 10 seconds. And there's a related work called Tiramisu, which was presented two days ago. And we actually share a similar observation with Tiramisu that SMT is slow for route computation modeling. But we choose two different uh, approaches. The intuition of Tiramisu is that they use graph algorithms that's specific to each type of policy. But in Plankton, we stay close to the actual protocol execution and implement an executable software model according to the protocol. So to conclude, um, our experiment result shows that uh, executable software model together with domain-specific optimizations will perform better than general SMT solving. And as for future work, one interesting direction is to verify the transient states. So as for now, all of the verification work are focusing on the converged states. But it is possible that some transient states will trigger some trouble in the normal network operation. Another interesting direction is incorporating real software, such as middle boxes, into our model checking technique. And if you're interested, you can check out our CCOM workshop paper. Thank you very much. All right, we have time for some questions. Yes, I would like to know how you handle routing loops. Routing rules? Loops, yeah. Routing loops, oh, I see. So if there's routing loops, uh, the model checker, oh, no, there's routing loops. Yes, we have a policy to check for routing loops. I think it's in one of the evaluations here. So we do have policies to check for uh, if there's a loop or not. And that policy will report uh, if we want to have a policy loop, and the, uh, the model checker will report the policy holds or not. So if the policy says that there should be, a, there should be no uh, folding loop, and if that's the case, the, uh, the model checker would uh, verify as true. So it's only going to verif uh, verify if you have in the loop or not, but it's not going to like choose the path that is going to say like this is the path without the loop. I see. You mean like having the trace where that triggers the yes, violations? It, yeah, the SMT algorithm you mentioned, right. like um, for it, it has to, for example, to choose which one to. I see. So by default, uh, spin it will have a trace of non-deterministic choices that will trigger a violation if there's one. And in addition, in addition to that, we can also generate our own, tra uh, our own traces by you know, writing our uh, models. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. uh, I have a yeah, question sure. about the policies. I'm wondering yeah. if the policies are hard-coded, or do you have a language to specify all the policies? So in this case, because uh, we extend uh, spin by writing uh, general purpose uh, like modules. So in our case, we can specify the policies in general purpose languages. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, let's thank the speaker.